Just like the other wars, drug wars are one of the well-known and famous rituals of the underworld. There have been two majorly famous drug wars that the world still remembers. But what were those wars? When did they happen? Numerous presently unlawful drugs like marijuana, opium, coca, and psychedelics have been utilized for clinical and otherworldly purposes for millennia. So why are some drugs now legal and others not? It has nothing to do with who is associated with these drugs, and it is not based on any scientific assessment of the relative risks of these drugs. In the 1870s, Chinese immigrants were the target of the first anti-opium laws. In the early 1900s, black men in the South were targeted by the first anti-cocaine laws. In the 1910s and 20s, Mexican immigrants and Mexican Americans were the primary targets of the first anti-marijuana laws in the Midwest and Southwest. Sit back, because we are now discussing drug wars inside the world of narco. Before that, hit the subscribe button if you haven't subscribed already. Now the more interesting part of the video which you all have been waiting for, the drug wars of the past. The first war is Miami Drug War. Background. Due to the drug wars of the 1970s and 80s, most people over 40 are aware of Miami's claim to be the world's drug capital. Even if you weren't in Miami at the time, national headlines about the cocaine cowboys, films like Scarface, smuggled in this delicious fruit was cocaine, and the popular TV show Miami Vice were enough to make the city famous. The medication history of Miami and South Florida goes back well before the public media inclusion. The people group is needed to manage progressing issues of medication use, fixation, and treatment. We will get to the present and ongoing articles in this series, yet we start with a set of experiences. The War and Its Consequences The United States government and a number of drug cartels, most notably the Medellin Cartel, engaged in a series of armed conflicts between the 1970s and 80s in the Florida city of Miami. The illicit trade in cocaine provided the majority of the fuel for it. The Dadeland Shopping Center shootout set off the drug war. Two members of a Colombian drug gang broke into a liquor store on July 11, 1979, in broad daylight, and they killed two customers. The killers were quickly named Cocaine Ranchers by a police officer. Viciousness became endemic in Miami. There were 573 murders in the city in 1980, and there were 621 the following year. The city morgue was overwhelmed with dead bodies by 1981 and was forced to rent a refrigerated truck to store the bodies until 1988. The majority of violent crime was directly linked to conflicts in the city's expanding drug trade. Miami in 1981 was answerable for dealing 70% of the nation's cocaine, 70% of the nation's weed, and 90% of the nation's fake quaaludes. A lot of Miami's medication dealing action was focused out of Coconut Woods Uprising at Boat Strait, where drug dealers would habitually meet and lead the business. By 1981, cocaine traffickers like the Falcon Brothers and Sal Magluta smuggled in approximately $2 billion worth of cocaine from Colombia, making crime in Miami a failed state. In no time, came out to be known as the drug capital of the world because of the never-ending wars among drug lords. One of the top leaders of drug trafficking in Miami was Colombian drug lord Griselda Blanco, who was a pioneer in cocaine trafficking and was responsible for more than 200 murders. With the fall of the Medellin cartel along with numerous drug trafficking organizations, the drug war abruptly ended. Now, next war, the Mexican drug war. Still here? Make sure you've subscribed to the channel. The background. Mexico has long been used as a staging and transshipment point for drugs and contraband between Latin America markets and those in the United States. Mexican peddlers provided liquor to the U.S. as criminals all through disallowance in the U.S., and the beginning of unlawful drug exchange with the U.S. started when forbiddance reached a conclusion in 1933. Mexicans began major drug smuggling at the end of the 1960s. Mexico participated in both Operation Intercept and Operation Condor in the 1960s and 70s. These operations were launched between the years of 1975 and 1978 under the guise of combating the cultivation of opium and marijuana in the Golden Triangle, particularly in Sinaloa. Colombian organizations partnered with Mexican drug traffickers to transport cocaine by land through Mexico into the United States as enforcement efforts intensified in South Florida and the Caribbean. 
Mexico had a major source of heroin and cannabis for a long time, and Mexican drug traffickers already had an infrastructure ready to serve Colombian traffickers. This made it easy to accomplish. Mexico-based organizations were established in dependable transporters of Colombian cocaine by the middle of the 1980s. In the beginning, the Mexican gangs received cash payments for their transportation services. However, toward the end of the 1980s, the Mexican transport organizations and the Colombian drug traffickers came to an agreement that included payment in product. Typically, Mexican transporters receive 35 to 50 percent of each shipment of cocaine. Because of this arrangement, Mexican organizations got involved in both the distribution and transporting of the drugs, as well as cocaine, and side by side, they became traffickers themselves. The Gulf Cartel and the Sinaloa Cartel have taken over Colombian cocaine trafficking to global markets in recent years. The War and Its Consequences The Mexican Medication War is the Mexican theater of the global war on drugs which the federal government of the United States leads. It is a low-intensity, ongoing, asymmetrical conflict between the Mexican government and various drug trafficking syndicates. The Mexican government clearly indicated that their main focus is bringing an end to the cartels and seriously avoiding the drug trafficking demand with U.S. functionaries. Soon after Miguel Ingel Felix Gallardo's 1989 arrest, violence rose. The Guadalajara cartel was an ally of the current cartels including the Tijuana cartel, the Juarez cartel, and the Sonora cartel led by Aldar Mariano was the first drug cartel in Mexico. He was the leader and founder of the group. After his capture, the union broke and high-positioning individuals framed their own cartels, battling for control of an area in dealing courses. Even though Mexican drug trafficking organizations have been around for a long time, their influence grew after the Colombian Cali and meddling cartels collapsed in the 1990s. Mexican medication cartels ruled discoinant illegal medication markets and in 2007 controlled 90% of the cocaine entering the unified states. Captures of key cartel pioneers, especially in the Tijuana and Bay cartels, have prompted expanding drug brutality as cartels battle for control of the dealing courses in the unified states. Government policing been redesigned no less than multiple times starting around 1982 in different endeavors to control debasement and decrease cartel brutality. The United States Congress passed legislation in late June 2008 to provide Mexico with $1.6 billion for the Merida Initiative, as well as technical advice to strengthen the national justice systems. According to many analysts, the approximate figure of the total sale earnings from the drug sales ranges somewhere from $13.6 to $49.4 billion per year. The official death toll from the Mexican drug war was at least 60,000 by the time President Felipe Calderon left office. Estimates put the death toll from the war at more than 120,000 by 2013, including 27,000 people who were still missing. Since taking office in 2018, President Andres Manuel López Obrador declared that the war was over. Because the homicide rate continues to be high, his comment was criticized. Steps the United States took to bring all this to an end After the things went out of his hands in the past, it was necessary to control the situation anyhow. At this time, the United States came up with a plan and started off a campaign, War on Drugs. This campaign, War on Drugs, was launched in June 1971, when Richard Nixon, who was the president at that time, increased funding for the drug control agencies and drug treatment efforts and declared drug abuse to be the public enemy number one. In order to consolidate federal efforts to control drug abuse, the Office for Drug Abuse Law Enforcement, the Bureau of Narcotics and Dangerous Drugs, and the Office of Narcotics Intelligence were combined in 1973 to form the Drug Enforcement Administration. Prior to Ronald Reagan's presidency, which began in 1981, the federal government's efforts to enforce the law lacked the war on drugs. From 50,000 in 1980 to 400,000 in 1997, Reagan's emphasis on incarceration rather than treatment for nonviolent drug offenses significantly increased the scope of the drug war. His wife, Nancy, spearheaded a different aspect of the war on drugs in 1984 with the privately funded Just Say No campaign, which educated school children about the dangers of drug use. The extension of the conflict on medications was in numerous ways driven by expanded media inclusion of, and coming about open apprehension over, the break plague that emerged in the mid-1980s. This elevated worry over unlawful medication utilized help drive political help for Reagan's firm stance position on drugs. 
The Anti-Drug Abuse Act of 1986 was enacted by Congress to provide $1.7 billion for the war on drugs and established a set of prison terms for different types of drug offenses. About 500 grams of powder cocaine was required to trigger that sentence. Moreover, possession of 5 grams of crack led to a 5-year sentence. Due to the fact that approximately 80% of crack users were African Americans, claims that the war on drugs was a racist institution and unequal increases in incarceration rates for nonviolent black drug offenders resulted from mandatory minimums. So this was it guys, that was all about today's video. We hope you liked the video. Don't forget to tell us in the comments what do you think about the drug wars inside the world of narco. If you enjoyed the video, subscribe to our channel for more such content. See you in the next video.